I'm Marta Trulovic for the Weather Network. It's time now for my favorite segment, Animals and Weather. But there's also some pretty amazing animals and uh, they're heading from Burnaby, BC to the Bahamas. I mean, yeah, I'd like to hike among the beautiful fall colors too, but not just yet, but it's already happening. Let's take a look at Monday morning for Toronto. It's going to be 12 degrees. I mean, that's right around the seasonal mark, 13. It's going to heat up to 18, not the seasonal mark. The seasonal mark for this time of year is around 22 degrees, so definitely a little bit cooler than normal. That's because there's a high pressure area situated over Ontario, bringing with it some of those cooler conditions from the north and uh, dipping temperatures a little bit below seasonal values pushing out those clouds allowing for the the ground to actually cool down much quicker which uh, could cause frost and there are some frost advisories in place that Environment Canada had issued throughout the day and here's why look at these temperatures four degrees in Sudbury three degrees in Timmins it's definitely chilly 12 in Toronto as I mentioned and uh, the, the potential for that frost overnight is definitely there but uh, there is precipitation in the forecast and it's coming in through Tuesday and Wednesday. Ahead of this warm front on Tuesday, there is a potential for some showers. And then in the warm sector ahead of the cold front, that's where we could see some of those severe thunderstorms. But it's the heat and humidity that's building in that warm sector that's also helping to fuel those thunderstorms. And when I'm talking about frost, now I'm talking about Humidex values. Check it out, 29 in Toronto, feeling like 36 on Wednesday, Windsor, 30, feeling like 38. So definitely weird with this temperature highs and lows, but it is September, so not out of the norm. The seven day look at Toronto again, Wednesday, 29, feeling like 36, those showers passing through. So that's what we can see in through the week for Toronto. A quick look at Kitchener, Markham, Burlington and Pickering for the next three days. Again, much of the same Tuesday and Wednesday. A little bit of rain icons for all of the areas surrounding Toronto in through the GTA. Quick look at that for you. Well, thousands of people are still displaced this after Dorian tracked over the Bahamas, leaving a trail of destruction behind. And officials say that the death toll is likely to rise as more people are missing. I'm Marta Trulovic. Thanks for joining us here on the Weather Network. We actually had our team, Nathan Coleman and Chris Murphy, out in Halifax surveying the damage. Here's what they have to say. Dorian definitely destructive as it tracked over the Maritimes. Let's take a look at Dorian's track. It's weakening as it's moving uh, through the Gulf of St. Lawrence in through the North Atlantic, uh, but it is still bringing some of those strong winds and heavy rainfall. Dorian made landfall on Saturday in Nova Scotia in Sambro Creek at 7.15 Atlantic time. Some of the summary uh, events in terms of rain and wind, lots of rain dumped in Moncton, lots of strong winds in Yarmouth of, as we take a look there in through uh, Ontario there's gonna be some showers and thunderstorms as the heat and humidity builds in Tuesday and through Wednesday and uh, that's in through the warm sector there so uh, you could see some of those storms popping up in through Tuesday and Wednesday now let's take a quick look at the temperatures it's gonna feel like 36 in Toronto on Wednesday Oh. I'm Marta Chilovich. Thanks for joining us here on the Weather Network. Let's just do a quick recap. We know that Dorian made landfall at around 7.15 Atlantic time in Sambro Creek. This is 25 kilometers south of Halifax. And as some may remember, Juan hit Peggy's Cove in 2003. So definitely close in proximity to where these two uh, storms hit. Now, forecasting Dorian, it's going to be in through the North Atlantic overnight tonight. So that's where that uh, storm is headed. But the summary, let's take a look at some of the big numbers that Dorian dropped a lot of rain and had very severe wind gusts in Yarmouth, 130 kilometers per hour, and in Moncton, 121 millimeters of rain fell. So lots of rain and, and uh, strong winds with uh, Dorian as well. But let's take a look at the next few days for the Atlantic. There is a high pressure area that's pushing in. So Monday and Tuesday is going to be looking pretty clear for the Atlantic. But again, there's still lots of that damage and people will be out surveying and you know checking out what this storm brought to them in Ontario there's going to be some showers and thunderstorms as the heat and humidity builds that's through Tuesday and Wednesday for Monday it's going to be a pretty clear day as that high pressure area pushes through but it's ahead of the warm front where we could see some of those showers and then ahead of that cold front in the warm sector where, where there will be some of those thunderstorms associated with that system um, 
There is going to be some overnight cool downs though and, and look at northeastern Ontario and some parts of uh, cottage country as well. Temperatures in the single digits and they're the low single digits. So with that comes a possibility for frost. There are some current advisories uh, in place. Environment Canada putting that in for some frost. Again, as I mentioned, areas in northeastern Ontario, northwestern Ontario and uh, northeastern Ontario, including uh, cottage country in there as well. And then the juxtaposition by Wednesday, the heat and humidity is building and you can see it's going to feel like 36 in Toronto in Windsor, 38. So that's by Wednesday uh, in through the West. There is some precipitation happening in through the southern uh, parts of BC and it's going to be a little bit wet and rainy in through Monday and Tuesday. We can see that in the forecast here, Vancouver 19 with some rain in there, Kelowna 17 with rain and it's going to be soggy for the prairies as well. The system bring brings wide spread rain through the week and it's going to be a little bit cool as this high pressure area pushes down and that low sort of sits across so wet weather for the prairies and cooler conditions as well uh, on Sunday in through Newfoundland but let's take a quick look at Dorian's history so it started on August 25th track towards and then we remember when it sat over the Bahamas and created that destruction as well hitting North Carolina and South Carolina and then tracking towards Atlantic Canada so this is just the past 10 days of Dorian's history and uh, as we saw some of that destruction in through the Maritimes um, making landfall uh, on Saturday at 715 Atlantic time 25 kilometers south of Halifax in Sambro Creek and as some people remember uh, in 2003 Juan hit Peggy's Ho Cove it was a direct hit and a quick comparison between the two uh, while Juan had was a Category 2 and had uh, 185 kilometer uh, per hour winds, still lots of destruction and Dorian caused a larger impact with widespread damage and as you saw there in Nova Scotia, New Brunswick and through uh, Newfoundland. Uh, it's going to weaken as it passes through. The conditions are going to improve as Dorian tracks over uh, the North Atlantic. That's where it's going to go in through the overnight hours uh, Sunday in through Monday. But a quick summary. I I mean, Dorian dumped lots of rain, had very, very severe wind gusts, 130 kilometers per hour in Yarmouth. And then let's look at Moncton, 121 millimeters of rain fell in Moncton. So definitely uh, extensive flooding, lots of that in that area. And as I mentioned, moving off into the North Atlantic, the next few days, though, will be quite calm in for Monday and Tuesday as a high pressure area pushes in. So giving a little bit of a break for the folks in the Maritimes. However, the damage is extensive and uh, they will be surveying the damage.